why we learn the software and how we learn the software. I tend to think of learning 3D software like a guitarist learning scales, chords, developing finger strength, finger independence, achieving the ability to play lightning fast, and discovering new techniques. Once the guitarist masters these things, they are free to make whatever music they can envision, which is the real heart and soul of what a musician does. Similarly, your art is what matters most. The software is the tool that helps you to bring your visions to life and to tell your stories. A wise man once said, if all you have is a hammer, everything else looks like a nail. This is from Abraham Maslow, if I'm pronouncing that okay, and the internet has a few variations on it. The point is about your limitations if you neglect to learn new tools. Going back to the guitarist analogy, if all you knew were three chords, then your entire fretboard would look like those three chords in different places and different inversions. Naturally, all your music then would probably be limited to just those three chords, holding you back from all the different beautiful sounds you could make if you learn more. When you make art, you don't want to be held back by a lack of knowledge of your tools. While it is a topic for another video, there's absolutely some truth to the idea that limitations can bring much creativity. I am a fan of retro game art styles such as pixel art, low poly art, things from the 8-bit era, 16-bit era, you know, the PlayStation 1 and 2 and so forth. The artists on those classic titles of old were making the very best of what they had to work with. However, on the other hand, the second the industry had better graphics technology at their disposal, they immediately began to utilize it. Today we still see game art creation with these art styles of old and they are still being celebrated as retro. They are done so either by choice, rather than through necessity because of its subjective appeal, or to be efficient as small indie developers have only so much time, energy, and resources to work with. Game art and VFX studios with massive budgets will utilize every tool they can to get the job done. They recognize that lesser tools, or the ignorance of greater tools right in front of them, will only lead to a lack of efficiency and ability to fully visualize the art they envision. So this brings us to a critical point. The artist needs to know what they are envisioning. What is the goal? What do they need to do? And what is it that they need to learn in order to do it? Under training, meaning not training enough, will keep you from your goals. But overtraining, meaning training too much, will also keep you from your goals. Think about it. If you're learning tools that you do not need to learn, or will not use those things for anything within your goals, what benefit is it? Or more importantly, how much time and energy are you wasting? In my experience, learning and learning and learning and learning software can be one of the most burnout inducing mistakes a 3D artist can make. What happens is you learn new skills and don't utilize them, move on to learn other new skills and then don't utilize them either. For years, I used to think some version of, if I simply learn everything now up front, then I can succeed later. I still deal with this mindset today, but the truth is it hasn't gotten me anywhere. Again, what I was thinking was some kind of version of, if I simply learn everything now up front, then I can succeed later. This mindset caused me to overtrain and to overlearn software as much as I could, as fast as I could. If you were to try to learn three programs in say one month, let's just say for example, sake, ZBrush Blender and Substance Painter for your three programs. That would mean in one month, you would spend less than two weeks with ZBrush, less than two weeks with Blender, and then less than two weeks with Substance Painter. By the time you would get through all that and then try to go back to ZBrush a month later, you would likely have forgotten a lot of what you had already learned a month ago. You didn't do it long enough to have it etched into your memory and may even have to rewatch your old tutorials again. Now I can't dogmatically argue for an exact amount of time that you need to spend learning each new app, but I can recommend a couple of months or at least a couple solid portfolio quality projects before moving on. Imagine yourself as if you were taking a class 
where you are in charge of the curriculum and the pass or fail dynamic. Think of it as a semester to complete before learning the next program in the next semester. Next, recognize what you do and don't need to learn. A game artist, for example, doesn't need to focus on offline renderers like Arnold and Cycles. I, for example, have never learned scripting languages. VFX artists don't need to focus on game art optimization of their models. Learning ZBrush as a character artist might look very different than learning ZBrush as an environment artist. And also, speaking of ZBrush, you don't actually need to learn everything in ZBrush, like, say, the Z modeler, perhaps, unless you really wanted to and had a reason why. Now, we must recognize one caveat. When first diving into a beginner's course, you will likely want to immerse yourself into the deep waters of the program's fundamental features. Now, I just mentioned briefly a minute ago that you don't need to learn the Z modeler in ZBrush. However, when I was first diving into ZBrush, I did at least watch the Z modeler tutorials in the video course I was going through, and I did fiddle around with the Z modeler enough and experience its features so that I would not be ignorant to them. On the other hand, I recognized that I already knew how to polygon model in other programs like Blender, Radius Max, and Maya, so I recognized it was not an essential tool for me to spend too much time working on, so I did not. I can always take a deep dive into it later on if I feel like it. If you have longer term goals as a professional 3D artist, you will naturally want to be aware. What are the software packages that your industry uses and what do they do? A basic fundamental understanding of what your software can do is advisable to have. So here is my advice when learning software. Take it or leave it if you're interested. First, learn the basics of the interface. Second, learn the basics of the tools and what they can do. Lastly, take a deeper dive into practical application of what you need to use on a regular basis. This last step should be the vast majority of your time during this semester of time with the program as we're calling it. Now in closing, I would like to say that as a content creator who's kind of focusing on the software right now, I do believe that it's important to learn the software. But ultimately, the software is just a tool. You are the artist, you are the designer, you are the animator, you are the end user. It is up to you to make great things. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all the best on your journey.